Hey guys, it's Tash, welcome back to my channel. I'm here for another collection and declutter video and this time it is with eyeshadow palettes. I am moving, I don't know where I'm moving, I it's a bit scary. I do need to get rid of some of these palettes though because they might be going into storage and I don't want to take a load of palettes with me that I don't particularly like. Now believe it or not, I've actually gone through all of these palettes over the past year and tried them out and I have decided what I like, what I don't like. I am a colour lover, but I'm also a neutral lover as well. So I am going to keep some boring neutral palettes as well as really colourful palettes. This isn't going to be a declutter where I'm going to be like just getting rid of stuff for the sake of getting rid of it. I thought really hard about it and I know exactly what I want to do. So without further ado, let's get into it. This first palette I've got here is by Dose of Colours and it's the Blushing Berries palette. This is an all matte palette. I think it's really beautiful berry shades, but I tried this out and as much as I really like it and I actually like the formula it's nice and soft and easy to blend I just don't find myself wanting to reach for this it doesn't really inspire me so I'm going to declutter this one this next palette is basically a bunch of single eyeshadows I got from makeup forever and I made my own little palette this was in Paris um, years ago I'm going to declutter this now it is really old I did like the colors at the time and I still do but I've got other colors that kind of fulfill my needs and I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the texture has changed slightly on these. They swatch fine and they don't smell or anything, but I'm just not going to keep this around because I've definitely got the same colours in other palettes. This next palette here is the Huda Beauty palette and this is the Gemstone Obsessions. It's one of her mini palettes. Um, I got this off Coast Cult Beauty a, couple, a few years ago. This is what it looks like inside. Really pretty shades, but once again, I just feel like I have got other palettes that I would rather reach for. Formula is a really nice soft formula. This is an all shimmer palette, which doesn't bother me at all. So yeah, I'm going to declutter this one as well. So that's three decluttered. That's going better than I thought. The next palette I have here is the Needs palette by Emily Noel and Makeup Revolution. This is like an all-in-one face palette. Let me get it open for you and this is what she looks like and I bought this because I really like Emily Noel and I really wanted to support her and I've taken it for like to travel down to my mum's a few times but if I'm honest with you I just don't feel inspired by it unfortunately sorry Em I just don't feel inspired by it anymore I do love my neutral palettes as well as my colourful palettes but I just don't feel the need to keep this so this one's going as well this next palette is the Too Faced Life's a Festival palette and I'll show you what it looks like inside. This one, I know a lot of people didn't like the packaging of this one. It's good, good job I like rainbows and unicorns, but it does look a bit kiddish on the outside. But on the inside, it's got some really pretty shades in here. And I actually still really like using this, particularly these two shades down here. I'll give you a quick swatch. I just think they're so pretty. So I'm going to be keeping this palette. Next up we have the Alice in Wonderland palette by Colourpop. This just came out recently, so this is going nowhere. It's just got some really pretty pastel shades in it. This blue in particular, I just swatched it on my hand. And it just swatches really, really well. It's not my favourite Colourpop palette, I have to say, but I have only just recently got it. And um, I do like the shades in there, and I think they perform okay. So I am going to keep this one. This is a Revolution and Soph palette. This is a great autumn palette. I've had a lot of fun using this around the autumn time. I think the colours are really nice and it actually performs really well. I'm not a big fan of the Makeup Revolution formula, but this actually exceeded my expectations. I am going to declutter it though because I know I've got other palettes that I'm going to keep that pretty much do the same kind of thing for me. So this is gonna go. The next palette I have here is the Viseart Liaison palette. This is what it looks like. I'm actually gonna keep this palette. I really do like this formula. It's beautiful, soft formula, and it blends really well. I do like, I do get on with the Viseart formula quite well. Plus, I love purple eyeshadow, so I'm going to keep this one. Next, we have the Coloured Rain Safari palette. This is an oldie but a goodie. I really love the colours in this. People are saying this looks like the Yucca palette from Natasha Denona, and I would definitely agree. It's just got some really beautiful greens and murky oranges and golds, and I love the looks that come out of this palette, so I'm going to be keeping this. This next palette is called the Mixed Metals palette, and it's by Profusion. This is the only Profusion palette that I have, and it's all thanks to my friend Katie. So thank you, Katie, for sending this to me. This is just a really nice cool-toned palette. It's got some purples in there. It doesn't look too dissimilar to that Liaison palette that I kept, but I am going to keep this because my friend got it for me, and so that kind of means something to me, so... And I do like the palette, it's really nice. This next palette is from Neethal Cosmetics and it doesn't have a name because I made this palette myself. I just chose the colours on the website and this is the palette I actually got for my birthday this year. As you can see I went quite bright, 
a lot of multi-chromes and duochromes. You can't really see multi-chromes that well on camera. I don't know if you can see the shift in that colour, but it is so pretty. And this is the first time I've used Lethal Cosmetics, so this is my one and only palette. And I've been getting into indie brands over the last couple of years, so you will see some indie brand palettes. I am going to be keeping this because obviously I made it, I love it, I think it's a really fun palette. So this is definitely staying in my collection. This is the Urban Decay Game of Thrones palette and it is massive. I actually enjoy using this, but it's more of a collector's piece for me. This is the inside of the palette and apart from these blues here, it is quite a neutral palette. I don't mind it too much. It's more of a collector's piece for me, but I am going to be keeping it because I did like Game of Thrones. Apart from the last series, that was a bit of a letdown. But um, this is more of a collector's piece for me. I do use it from time to time. So I am going to keep this bulky thing right here. Now this one makes me a bit sad. This is old. I told you I had some old palettes in my collection. This is the Vice palette by, the Vice 3 palette, I believe, by um, Urban Decay. And although it perfor still performs really well, you might be able to see some shades have a dent in them, particularly this one here and this white here, this white shimmer. Those two are probably my favourite shades in the palette. I am going to get rid of this though. It is old and I do feel I've got these colours in other palettes now. So... I don't need to be keeping this one around. It hurts a little bit though because I was a big collector of the Vice palettes. This next palette here is the Royal Rose palette by Cosmic Brushes and they're a brand I started following last year once since the Serenity came out. This is actually their first palette and I've, I've got this on today, not that you can see my look, but um, I've got the reds on today and the champagnes. This is a really beautiful palette. I do love Cosmic Brushes formula. It's just so nice, so soft. The shimmers are amazing. The mattes perform really well and blend really well. Um, this is the company that I am really, really um, inspired by. It's like they're my new Urban Decay. And I can't believe I've said that, but Urban Decay over the years have gotten a bit boring. I used to love Urban Decay. They are a little bit boring these days for me. And I prefer something with a bit of colour in my life. So Cosmic Brushes all the way. They do have a new palette coming out by the time you see this video. And I'm definitely going to purchase that one as well. I'm loving these palettes. So I have another Cosmic Brushes palette. This is the Muse palette. You've got those pinks and greens and grungy colours. You've got this mustard yellow up here. It's just a really beautiful palette. And like I said before, the formula on these is so good. They blend so well and they're so easy to work with. Moving on to the next pile, we have this Urban Decay palette and I don't even know what it's called. It's got a little peacock on there. This is really old and I loved playing with this years ago. It is an all shimmer palette, but it has classics like Mildew in there. I'm going to get rid of this though, because it is really old. I don't really reach for it. Not that it's, I don't mind all shimmer palettes, but like I said, I can just pull in a matte palette and if I want to, and, and I can create a look like that. This is just really old. I can't even remember what it's called. And I rarely reach for it. So that's definitely gonna go. Moving on, we've got the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette here. It's a really nice palette with a few pops of purple, but it just doesn't do enough for me. I feel like I want more pigment from it. So I'm actually going to give this away to um, a friend. I know exactly who I'm going to give it to. So lucky them, they'll love this. I do love Huda Beauty's formula in the larger palettes, but it's just this one wasn't particularly for me. So that's going to get decluttered. Now we're coming to palettes that I find very hard to get rid of and this is the Gingerbread Spice palette by Too Faced. Too Faced hasn't really come out with anything that I've loved for a while and I know this is a basic neutral palette but <laughs> I really like it. I love pulling this out around autumn and Christmas and just playing with it so I'm definitely going to be keeping this palette. I then have some Naked palettes here. This is the Naked 2. This is the cooler toned version. This is a hard one because it is a really old palette, but also it's a cool toned palette and I do like reaching for it when I want to get a nice cool toned look. So I think I'm going to keep this one as old as it is. This is the Naked 3 palette and this is the more rosy toned version. I'm actually going to declutter this version because I have other palettes that perform better than this one. I do love the shades. I love a good rosy tone and a no nice mauvey tone, but I've just got other palettes that I prefer to reach for, so that's going to get decluttered. I'm actually decluttering more than I thought I would. Okay, now this next one is my Naked palette. Now, believe it or not, my palettes have been used quite a lot over the years, but I am very, very soft and like gentle with how I use them. I don't like swirl my brushes into them or anything like that. If you do, you do you, but like that's just not how I use my palettes, so I rarely hit pan. I'm actually going to keep my Naked palette just for nostalgic reasons, plus I like to pull it out for Christmas. I didn't buy this when it first came out, so it's not as old as that, but it's still quite old and I'm keeping it anyway. So I've noticed we're going into quite a few neutral palettes now. This is the Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette. 
And this is what it looks like inside. Just again, really nice autumnal shades. They smell amazing. Nothing particularly special or anything like that, but I really like these palettes. They inspire me and I just, I think they're cute. Yeah, the packaging, I think the packaging helps, but I do think these are cute palettes, especially around the autumn time. I mean, I use them all year round, but that's gonna get kept. I then have the peanut butter palette, which still smells like peanut butter. This is the peanut butter and jelly. And this is what it looks like here. I'm actually gonna declutter this. Again, this is really old. I did love it at the time. I can get those same warm shades in the gingerbread palette, so I don't feel like I need this anymore. Right, I feel like I am hating on Huda Beauty at the moment because I haven't kept anything of hers so far. We've only gone through two palettes and I do have quite a few. This is the Haze palette. I think this is the Sand Haze palette. And this is what it looks like inside. I wasn't really impressed with the formula of these. I know it's supposed to be like a hazy eyeshadow, but I just, maybe I don't like the haze thing, but I, I wasn't a fan. I mean, the mattes were fine. Um, the shimmers were a bit lackluster for me, so I'm gonna declutter this one. Then we have the gold palette by Huda Beauty. I'm also gonna declutter this one. They don't transfer as well in like on your eyes as they do in a swatch. So I'm actually gonna declutter this one as well. Right, this is a Huda Beauty palette that I am gonna keep. This is the nude medium palette. I found these palettes are really good quality. Um, the mattes are really nice and soft. Everything blends really well. So I'm gonna keep this one. And I'm also going to keep the nude rich. And somewhere I have the nude light, I'm gonna keep that one too, but I can't find that right now. So here is the nude rich version. I then have a collab palette with Hocus Pocus and Colourpop, and this is the Witching Hour palette. Here's what she looks like inside, just really fun shades, very nice for autumn, really cool witchy shades. This was my favourite Hocus Pocus palette until the third one came out and I'll show you that one soon. But um, yeah, I'm going to definitely keep this one, I love the shades in here. Then we have the Hocus Pocus palette, this is the original palette that came out and caused the stare and it sold out constantly. This is what it looks like inside, this is a bit more muted and subdued and grungy. I still really love it though, it performs really well so I'm going to keep this, plus I love everything Hocus Pocus. This is a really old MAC palette, I love the packaging, I love cameos so... This is what it looks like inside, it's just a bit of a dull and boring <laughs> colour story and these shadows are really terrible they swatch terribly there's no pigment to them i have been keeping this for the packaging for so long now but i think it's time for it to go it is years old then we have the naked heat palette by urban decay what i find about this palette is every time i do a look with this it comes out exactly the same so it's not the most diverse palette in the world i'm actually going to declutter this one i didn't think i would again i'm keeping all those gingerbread palettes i feel like i could create the same look with those that i can with this so this is going to get decluttered I have a Wet n Wild colour icon eyeshadow palette here. Um, this is in Stop Ruffling My Feathers. It's just a really basic kind of palette. It's okay for travel, but I've got other smaller palettes that I prefer, so I'm going to get, let this one go and give it to somebody else to play with. These were limited edition palettes by Wet n Wild. I've got another one here called Flock Party. Again, just your basic palette. It does have like a really nice kind of um, cranberry shade in there but I just don't feel like I need these so I'm going to declutter this one as well. Then we have the Juvia's Place The Berries. It's a monochromatic palette but I absolutely love the shades in here. I love the formula of Juvia's Place so I'm going to keep this one. This teeny tiny palette here is a collaboration between Rachel Zoe and Lorac Cosmetics. This has a full-on glitter shade in it and I didn't realise it while I, when I was buying it. I just thought it looked like a really beautiful shimmer and unfortunately it is a press glitter and it's one of those chunky ones that you really need glitter glue with and then you feel like it's going to get in your eye and you're going to go blind. On that basis I'm going to declutter this palette because it's just teeny tiny. I don't really use it so I feel like it can go. The next palette is the Huda Beauty Pastel Rose Palette and I'm telling you now I'm going to de declutter all of these pastel palettes by Huda Beauty. I feel like her formula in the smaller palettes is very hit and miss and these pastels just didn't hit the mark with me. Um, they're a bit chalky, the shades don't really show up that well on me and I'm quite pale. So I just wasn't impressed with this collection. So I'm gonna declutter these. I'll show you the other two. We have the Pastel Mint and the Pastel Lilac. So this next palette is from Sleek and it's the Whimsical Wonderland palette. This is really old like super old. I did some looks with this on my channel like years ago. Just super cute pastels, but I've got better pastels now that I like to play with, so I'm going to declutter this one. The next palette I've got here is the Party Favor palette, and this is by Urban Decay. And this is basically all moon dust shadows in neutral shades. I'm going to keep this because I do love using these. 
especially when I'm going out, which is not very often, but I just think they add a really cute sparkle to the eye. So I'm actually gonna keep these. This next palette is the Shine XO Remix palette. So this is two palettes in one. This is one side here. And that was basically the more colourful side, and this is the more neutral side. Um, I love Shan XO, I think she's great, but this palette just doesn't inspire me anymore, so I'm going to pass this one on. This one makes me really sad. This is my first ever Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, and it was in collaboration with Maya Mia. I love this palette, even though it was neutral, that pop of aqua in the corner just made every look. You can see from the dents in this palette how much I've loved it, but it is really old and it's time now to declutter it. This Tinkerbell palette from Colourpop is going absolutely nowhere. I love the colour story in this. This is what it looks like. Those greens are just stunning. I absolutely love them. I love everything about this palette. It's being kept. Now we're going into quite a few Colourpop palettes now and they're probably all going to get kept but I will show you them anyway. And this is the Lilac You A Lot. Really pretty pastel shades. You've got that shade, a couple of shades down here to deepen up the look. It's just so stunning. Now this palette does have a pressed glitter, you can see I have used it. I do use a glitter glue with it and I tend to put it on the inner corner of my eye or just slightly underneath. This is the Baby Got Peach, this is great for spring as well. Again, like I said in my lipstick video, I, I wear my palettes whenever I want but there are times when I want to see the season. This next one is called the Blush Crush and it's just a bunch of really cute mauvey pink tones. Definitely keeping this. And then we have Nude Mood and I'm gonna be keeping that one as well. This is possibly one of my favorite ColourPop palettes from the Monochromatic series ever. This is the Blue Moon palette, and once again, my friend Katie got this for me. Thank you so much, Katie. These blues are incredible, just really pigmented, but easy to blend out. They're just really beautiful shades, so I'm gonna be keeping this. Told you there were quite a lot of ColourPop palettes. So this is the Just My Luck palette, and I think this came out a few years ago around St. Patrick's Day. Gonna be keeping this one. We have the Aha uh -huh Honey. This is what Aha uh -huh Honey looks like, an all yellow palette, which I absolutely love. I wish it didn't have a pressed glitter like that. I know their pressed glitter formula has gotten better now. It has a lot more pigment to it and it's not as chunky, but these old pressed glitters, I just wish weren't in the palette. I wish there was a shimmer there, but there we go. This is a Strawberry Shake palette, definitely keeping this. And then we move to their collab with Malibu Barbie. And this is what Malibu Barbie looks like inside. So pretty, pinks, blues, yellows, neutrals, I love this palette, I'm gonna be keeping this. From Too Faced, I have the Cinnamon Bear palette. This is one of the limited edition releases around Christmas. It came out with a lipstick that I also have in my collection. This is what it looks like, it's just eight eyeshadows and a blush. I'm actually going to declutter this because I wasn't that keen on the formula. I don't think it's like the best Too Faced formula ever. The packaging is always really cute, but the formula just isn't there for me, so I'm going to be decluttering this. Next I have a couple of my favourite neutral palettes. I've got the Saharan by Juvia's Place. Just really nice rich neutral shades and I'm going to be keeping this. One I am going to declutter though is the Nubian. Again this is a neutral palette but I just feel like the shades are all kind of samey samey so I'm going to get rid of this from my collection. Here we have my one and only Pixie palette. This is in collaboration with It's Judy Time. It's just a neutral palette. I actually liked the formula of this. I thought it performed really well and the shimmers were quite nice. The mattes are blendable, but I just don't feel inspired by this palette, unfortunately. Um, so I'm gonna be decluttering this one. This is the Mystic Petal palette by NYX. This is a terrible palette. It has absolutely no pigment to it and it's just basically unusable. It put me off of buying NYX eyeshadows in general, to be honest. I'm sure there are better palettes out there, but this was a huge miss for me. So I'm gonna be decluttering this one. Another one that makes me really sad is the Urban Decay Electric Palette. This was when Urban Decay were exciting. They came out with this really cool, bright neon palette. It doesn't really show up in the um, viewfinder how it shows in real life. These colors are so vibrant and cool. But I noticed that the quality has changed. This is a really old palette. They don't perform the way that they used to, so I'm going to declare this. Ouch. We have some more palettes from Colourpop. I can't remember what collection this was from. This is called The Coast Is Clear and it's just a basic neutral palette. I haven't actually done anything to these. I haven't swatched them, I haven't touched them. And even though I bought them this year, I just don't feel inspired by them. I feel like they looked better online than um, in real life. So I'm going to declutter these three palettes. I will show you them though. And I'll pass them on to a friend who will get better use out of them. This one is called Clearly In Love. And this one is called Clear the Air. I have the Too Faced Cat Eyes palette from years ago. Does anybody remember this? I used to love this palette. 
I love using the purples in here but if I'm honest purples come a lot a long way since then and um, I've got quite a few purples I kept that liaison palette from Viseart so I'm gonna get rid of this one we have the moon dust palette by urban decay and this is what it looks like inside really beautiful sparkly shades I love the moon dust formula so I'm definitely keeping this it's going nowhere Sorry, this next palette is going to be really effective, but this is the Patrick Tar palette. This is Major Dimension 2. I love the rosy tones in here. This is a great neutral palette. I think the shimmers are amazing, so I'm going to be keeping this. This palette here is gross and sticky. It is really old. Um, it's the Naked Basics. You can see that my black broke and caused the right mess everywhere. I'm going to be decluttering this because I have another all matte palette that I want to keep from Urban Decay. Oh, it's disgusting. This next palette is the Creme de Couture palette by Sigma. And this is what it looks like inside. I saw after this because X Barker would always use it and it looked amazing on her eyes. She'd always use it with the Jumbo Eye Pencil by NYX in Milk. And I think that helped because when I use this, I find that these pastels are quite lacklustre and they're a bit chalky for me. So I'm actually going to get rid of this um, and yeah, I'm going to declutter it because again, I've got pastels that perform a lot better than that now. Right here I have the Urban Decay Ultimate Basics and this is the all matte palette that I was on about. I love to pair this up with Shimmery Palette. This is a great all round matte palette so I am going to be keeping this particular matte palette. Next up I have four of these eyeshadow palettes by Hello Kitty and Colourpop. And this is what this one looks like inside. This is called Coco Cutie. I love these, I've got an obsession with Hello Kitty so these are going nowhere. And I just think they're great travel palettes if you want a nice colourful look. And I think the names are really cute. This is called Teeny Keeny. Which is the cute orange monochromatic palette. This one is called Cherry Sweet. And this one here is called Pineapple Cake. Okay, I feel like I've been really harsh on Huda Beauty lately, but, re but I've got a palette here that I absolutely love. This is my favourite Huda Beauty palette so far. This is the Mercury Retrograde. You probably heard me talk about this in other videos, but this is such a great palette. I just think you can create some really beautiful ethereal looks from this palette, so this is a keep. This next one is the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered palette. This was actually sent to me for review purposes and I actually prefer this to the Desert Dusk. I feel like, I don't know what the last Rose Gold was like, but this one is so nice. The shimmers are so pigmented and the mattes are beautiful and blendable. It's just everything that the Desert Dusk wasn't for me. So I did like the Desert Dusk at a time, but I just feel like I like a bit more of an intense look these days. This next one's a bit of a shock to me because I didn't think I was going to declutter this because I absolutely love Disney and Disney princesses. This is the Midnight Masquerade by Colourpop. It has two pressed glitters. It's just a neutral palette, but I just didn't really get on with it that well. I didn't find that uh, the looks I created were anything special, so I am going to let this one go. This next palette is by Melt Cosmetics and this is the Rust palette. Really beautiful, grungy, rusty shades. I absolutely love this palette. This is definitely a keep. Then we have my Too Faced The Naturals eyeshadow palette. This palette is actually really nice quality. It's that great Too Faced quality. I've got so much use out of this, but I think it's time to pass it on. I don't know exactly who I can give it to, so I'm going to declutter this one. Now, I'm not sure where you can find Flower Beauty anymore. Um, I can't find it on Superdrug, so I'm not sure if they're still available in the UK. This is the Sun's Blazing palette. Although I did get some really nice looks out of this, I just feel I have other palettes and I've kept other palettes around, like my Gingerbread palette, that are going to create the same kind of look. So I'm going to declutter this one. I'm actually looking at my declutter gut pile, guys, and it's really not that bad. I'm doing better than I thought. This next palette is from Vizia, and it is the Petit Pro Choo Choo. I absolutely love this packaging, the way it opens. I think it's great. It's just really pretty. This is the palette inside. I'm gonna keep this. I think it's a great palette for travel and it's got some nice bright pops of pink in there and that really cute coral. So I think I'm gonna keep this. We have some more haze palettes here by Huda Beauty. This one here is purple haze. And then we have khaki haze. Which, like I said, I wasn't a big fan of the formula on these. So these are gonna get decluttered. Then we come to a couple of Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes. This is the Soft Glam. Now the eyeshadows are really soft and I know some people don't like that and you do get a fallout and as you can see this one is quite messy. Um, but I actually like the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula so I'm going to be keeping this. Then we have the Norvina palette. Really pretty purples, pinks and neutrals. I'm going to be keeping that. I haven't been that impressed with the eyeshadow palettes come out that have come out from Anastasia Beverly Hills recently. I haven't tried them but the colour stories are just not singing to me. This is the Modern Renaissance. This is the one that really put Anastasia Beverly Hills on the map. When you look at it now, it looks kind of basic, but everybody went wild for this. <laughs> I like those rich red tones in here, so I'm going to be keeping this. 
And then we have the dreaded subculture palette. I'm going to be decluttering this because I didn't get on with it at all. It's a real shame because this colour story is just beautiful. It's really grungy and dingy and everything I love about an eyeshadow, but I just don't like this formula. So this is going to get decluttered. I have some more Huda Beauty palettes. This is the Nude Light. This is from that Nude collection that I showed you earlier. This is what Nude Light looks like inside. I'm going to be keeping that one. Then I have the Wild Collection, and once again, I wasn't that impressed with these. I was just something about these smaller palettes that I just don't get on with as much as the larger palettes. But this shade here was like a real letdown. It doesn't swatch, it swatches okay, but it just, it doesn't perform that well on the eyes in my opinion, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. I love the color story of this one, but once again, I just didn't get on with the formula in these, so I'm gonna be getting rid of this one. This is the Wild Chameleon, and that last one was the Wild Jaguar. We then have the Wild Tiger. This is what that one looks like. I'm gonna get rid of it. And then this is the Wild Python. I'm gonna declutter this one. I just I just don't like the formula. That's, that's it, basically. I have another palette here from Colourpop. This is in Mint to Be. I love this palette. I've also got the Super Shock Shadows that go with this collection, and I love putting them together. It's just another palette from the Monochromatic Collection, so I'm gonna be keeping this one. I'm sure I've decluttered this one before, but this is the KVD Beauty, or as it was then, Kat Von D Beauty. This is the Chrysalis eyeshadow palette. And I really looked forward to using this, but again, I didn't like the formula of this. They were all right, but we didn't gel that well, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this in frame. This is the Saint and Sinners palette. It's absolutely massive. And again, I just didn't get on with the formula. I know a lot of people didn't like the layout of this particular palette, but that didn't bother me. I got the stained glass thing that she was trying to do, but it's a really beautiful palette, but I'm um, like aesthetically pleasing, but I'm gonna get rid of it. This is an Urban Decay palette. I believe it is the Heavy Metals palette. It's one of those that slides out of the packaging. So let me show you what one side looks like. That's one side, it's more colorful side. And then we have the more neutral side. That is a terrible angle sash. I'm gonna declutter this palette. It was nice, it was okay, I didn't mind it, but it doesn't give me as much joy as the moon dust shadows do, so that can go. This is the Sugar Pill and Edward Scissorhands collab, and I did not get on with these eyeshadows at all. I just found them to be really patchy and awkward to work with, so I am going to declutter this, unfortunately. I was gonna keep it as a collection piece because I loved Edward Scissorhands growing up, but honestly, I'm just not that attached to it, and the shadow quality, just didn't blow me away, so I'm gonna declutter that one. Moving on to my favorite Hocus Pocus palette by Colourpop. Th I said that really weird, Colourpop. <laughs> um, this is the All Hallows Eve palette, and this is just a really fun, witchy, bright colors. It reminds me of Halloween when I open it, so this palette gives me a lot of joy, and I'm gonna be keeping it. I have a palette here from Beauty Bay. This is the Technodays palette, and I actually really liked the formula in this. It was my first time trying Beauty Bay eyeshadow formula, and it's a really, really nice formula. So this is quite new to my collection. I think this was limited edition. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but I am going to keep this one. Does anyone remember when the world went crazy for the Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts palette? I haven't used this yet. I don't even think I've swatched it. I am gonna keep this though, because I'm really keen to find out what all the fuss is about. We have some more Beauty Bay palettes here. This is the Midnight palette. I haven't tried these yet. I've swatched them, but I haven't tried them. They're quite new to my collection, so I'm gonna be keeping these. Then we have the Earthy palette. So pretty. And then we have the Berries palette. One Beauty Bay palette that I have used and did not get on with was the Golden Age. Again, I just had problems with the golds in this palette. I've got really good golds that work amazingly, so I don't need to hold on to this if I don't like the formula. So I'm gonna be saying goodbye to this palette. Here I have another Vizzy Art palette. This is the Warm Edit. And as much as I love the colour story of this, I've kept this over and over again, so I'm going to be decluttering this one and passing it on. This palette is brand new to my collection, and this brand is brand new to my collection as well. This is the Cleona Deep Sea palette. Deep Sea Treasures, sorry. And this is what it looks like inside. It's just beautiful multi-chromes, absolutely stunning. I haven't used it yet. I have swatched it, though I couldn't resist. And I swear, they are so beautiful. I can't wait to use them on the eyes, so I'm definitely keeping that one. I then have a bunch of these Kaleidos Futurism palettes. I hear these are getting discontinued, which I think is a real shame. I absolutely love these palettes. This is the Electro Turquoise, and you bet I'm gonna be keeping all of my Kaleidos palettes. The packaging is just stunning on these. This here is the Sci-Fi Greens. We have the Cyber Bronze, beautiful. Astro Pink, and this one is the VR Neon. This is my Merry Christmas palette from Odin's Eye. This was my first ever Odin's Eye palette, and oh my God, I absolutely love it. 
I use this to heck at Christmas time and I absolutely love this green shadow here as you can tell there's quite a dent in it already. <laughs> this palette is stunning, I wish I got the other palette that came with it but it's sold out, I hope they bring them back for Christmas this year so more people can get their hands on them because the quality in these is incredible. Talking of Christmas I have the Holidays 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 palettes from the Muppets and Colourpop. It's a really good formula in this palette, I had so much fun playing with it around Christmas time and again beyond so I'm going to be keeping this one as well. It was so much fun. I have my third and final palette from Cosmic Brushes. This is the Serenity palette. This palette is absolutely stunning. It's just beautiful greens, blues, purples, grungy colours. You can do so much with this palette. I can't wait until the new palette comes out. And if you haven't seen it yet, go on Instagram and have a look at it. It's all candy inspired. So, But this palette is stunning and it's going nowhere. So I'm keeping that one. This next palette is the Urban Decay Vice palette. I can't remember which one this is. This is what the inside looks like. I found this really cool at the time, but I just don't feel anything for it anymore. So I'm gonna declutter this one. This is an older Urban Decay palette, um, the Vice XX, but it's hardly been used and I'm gonna keep it because I do like the shades in there. They're quite muted when you look at them now, but I do love Gash, this one here. And I haven't played around with it that much considering it's still, it's been in my collection for years. So I'm gonna give this one a chance and I'm going to keep it. We have the All That palette by Colourpop. I love this palette, but it smells really off. I think it's this shade here. It smells really bad and rancid, so I'm gonna get rid of this palette, unfortunately, but I did love this Valentine's Day. For Valentine's Day, it was a really cute palette. We have the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. This is what it looks like. It's a really beautiful palette. I love this for spring and summer, so I'm gonna be keeping this. Moving on, we've got a Natasha Denona palette. This is the Retro palette. Great Movie Tones, a really nice formula. I do get on well with the Natasha Denona formula, and these are expensive, so I'm gonna be keeping this. Here I have the Escape Pod palette by Kaleidos. And this is just a really fun, colourful palette. Definitely keeping this. We've got a few more Natasha Denona coming up. This is the Glam palette. And this is what the Glam palette looks like. And this is what the Bronze palette looks like. And this is one of the reasons I got rid of some of my Urban Decay palettes. Like the Naked palettes. Because I've got those kind of shades in these palettes. And I do prefer the Natasha Denona formula. Luckily, because it's expensive. One of my favourite palettes from Natasha Denona is the Circo Loco palette. I know not everybody liked this palette, but I absolutely love the colours. I think the formula is great, so I'm going to keep this. Then we have the Pastel palette. And again, I know not everybody loved this, but I got on really well with these shades. And I think this is my favourite and best pastel formula in my collection. So I'm going to be keeping these. We then have the Love palette from a few years back on Valentine's Day. Just a really pretty palette. You can create really nice looks for the Valentine's Day and all year round, obviously. But... It is a really nice palette, so I'm going to be keeping that. Not getting rid of any of my Natasha Denona palettes at the moment. I have the Marc Jacobs Beauty Terrific palette. You might have seen the lipstick that goes with it if you watch my lipstick collection. I'll link that down below for you. I actually really like this formula. It's the only Marc Jacobs eyeshadow palette that I've tried, and I do like it. So I'm going to be keeping this. Then we have another Juvia's Place palette. This is the Violets, and this is what the Violets look like. So pretty, definitely keeping this. Then we have an Odin's Eye collection. I forget the name of the collection, but it's based on jewels. So this is the Jewels and Gem palette. I haven't used these. I have swatched a couple of them, but these are really new to my collection. They only came into my hands a couple of weeks ago. So pretty, I cannot wait to play with these. If they're anything like that Merry Christmas palette, then I'm excited, I can't wait. I mean, the packaging is stunning. And this is the Stone and Rock palette. And that green down there is just calling my name. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Bieber palette. I'm going to declutter this one. It's a really nice palette and I was gonna keep it for like going down to my mum's and things like that because it's a really easy palette to take and travel with. But I know someone else is gonna love this so I'm gonna pass it on to them. I've got these mint melt palettes. This is in chocolate mint. I was not a fan of the formula of these. I find them different to the other quads in this collection like in the bite size collection. So I'm going to declutter this. Plus I have my mint to be palette from Colourpop. Then we have the Mint 2B palette. Once again, I was just not happy about this formula. I didn't feel like it performed very well, so I'm gonna need to cut that one. I just gouged this one, but Orange Dreams are cool. Another one where I felt like it looked a lot brighter in the um, photo online and I got it and it was more subdued and all of these shades look the same on the eye, so I'm just gonna declutter this one. I'm gonna keep Pumpkin Spice. It's just really nice warm toned quad, so I'm gonna keep that one. Cream and Sugar is your everyday basic nudie palette. If I just want to do a really basic look, which I do sometimes, then I'm going to keep this one. 
This next one is called Rosewater and I'm gonna declutter this one. This is really beautiful, I do love it and I have got some use out of it but I just don't feel like I need it in my collection anymore so I'm going to declutter that one. We then have Berry Bad which I'm going to keep this one. So I got rid of Rosewater. This just has a bit more of a like kick to it so I'm going to keep that. We have Hot Jalapeno which is one of my favourite um, quads from e.l.f. I'm definitely keeping this, I love this shade right here. I have this Wet n Wild colour icon in Camo Flaunt. This is a really nice, um, decent quality, but it has this press glitter in the middle. I just don't ever reach for it, so I think I'm going to declutter it, and the press glitter, not my favourite. Okay, we are on to our last pile, and we're gonna start with the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. This is mostly a shimmer palette, and it is a really nice Too Faced quality, so I'm gonna be keeping that one. I was sent this Smashbox Cover Shot Smoky Eye palette to review. The ELF packaging is really cool. And this is what the inside looks like. You've just got your smoky shades there. But to be honest, I just don't reach for it. So I'm gonna pass that one on. I have my Urban Decay Born to Run palette. And this is one of my favorite Urban Decay palettes, although it's on the more neutral side. I just think of the, performa the performance of the eyeshadows is really, really good. It is quite messy, so you can see that I do use it quite a bit, but um, I'm definitely keeping this one. Next, we have this thing, which is the, um, I'm not gonna get it all in frame from where I am, but this is the Metal Matte palette. This is a Kat Von D palette that I did really like. Let me just try and get all the shades in shot for you. But this red shade here has gone a bit dodgy and it's not just white from the eyeshadow next to it, it has grown some white on it and I think it might be mold. So I think it's time to let this one go. Plus again, it's just really hard to store because it's so big and long, That's what she said. We have the Urban Decay Naked Cherry palette. This is a bit similar to the Naked Heat palette in terms of that you can only really get like one look from it, but there's something about this. My mum bought this for me, so I'm definitely gonna keep it and hold on to it and, and play around with it and maybe mix it up with some other palettes. We have the Too Faced Pumpkin palette. This is what it looks like. Not too dissimilar from the Gingerbread palettes, but I'm gonna keep it. It's fun, it smells really nice, and I like the performance of the eyeshadows. We have the Naked Honey palette. And I love this palette, especially this middle shade right here. It's just a great neutral palette, so I'm gonna be keeping it. Then we have the Melt Gemini palette. And this is just like a grungy dream. So I'm definitely keeping this. I love the greens and the grungy neutrals in this. So I'm keeping this one. We have my old school chocolate bar palette. And this is the old, old school one. It's before they thinned the palettes down. I'm going to declutter this. It still smells of chocolate, believe it or not, but it is old and, um, an accident happened with this particular shade here. Although I loved the formula at the time, uh, I feel like eyeshadows have come a long way since this palette, so I'm gonna let this one go. This next one here is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette. I really love this palette, I think it's stunning. I think the pop of coral is really fun as well, so I'm gonna be keeping this. I then have the Riviera Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I know not everybody liked this, but I really like it, it's their bright palette. And people said that the shades didn't really go, but I feel like I can make them work. So I'm gonna keep this one. I really like it. I, feel, I know I'm in a minority, but I do think it's a really nice palette. The Urban Decay Vice 2 palette. I absolutely loved this palette when it first came out. But now I look at it again, I feel like the shades are more muted compared to what I love now in a colorful palette. I don't feel like this looks colorful anymore. It doesn't look colorful enough for me. It looks like the, the volume has been turned down on the shades. So I'm gonna declutter this. Again, this is another one that hurts my heart, but it is time. I don't really reach for it. I've used them to death, so it's time for that one to move on. One that I am gonna keep from Too Faced is the Sweet Peach palette. I was definitely on the hype train when this first came out, trying to get it, and every time that it sold out, or did it really sell out, was that just like a marketing ploy? Anyway, I really like this palette, it still smells of peach and I'm gonna keep this one. This next one is the Too Faced Chocolate Bon Bon palette. I'm gonna declutter this one, I did have fun with it. It's a more cool tone palette with pops of colour, but I do feel like I've got stuff like that in my collection now. I mean, I have stuff like the Sweet Peach in my collection as well, but I'm gonna declutter this one. I can't believe how many I'm decluttering, seriously. Urban Decay Urban Spectrum. This is old, but it's a dual tone palette and I absolutely love the shades in here. I just think they're so beautiful, beautiful dual tones. So I'm gonna keep this palette around and see if I use it. And if I don't use it within the next year, then it can go. Here we have the Juvia's Place Deuce palette. This is what the inside looks like. I love this, I think it's a really fun palette, so I'm gonna keep it. 
We then have the Zodiac Love Signs palette from BH Cosmetics. This is what it looks like, so pretty. I'm actually gonna keep this, I really like these shades and I love the baked formula of BH Cosmetics shadows. So I'm gonna keep this one. I am going to cut the original Zodiac. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, it's just a more neutral palette and it doesn't inspire me as much as the Zodiac Love Signs palette. So I'm going to declutter this one. I just found a few more palettes in my drawers, so <laughs> let's get on with these and then we can get the video. I hope you guys got a snack and a drink because this is going to turn out to be a really long video. This is the Zoeva palette, this is the Rose Golden palette. So it is a really nice formula from what I remember, but it just doesn't inspire me, so this can get decluttered. Then we have the Warrior by Juvia's Place. And unlike that Beauty Bay palette, this is a gold palette I can get behind. The formula is everything in this palette. It's just a really nice, so pigmented. I absolutely love it, so I'm gonna keep this. Then we have the Tribe palette by Juvia's Place. Once again, I love this color story, the greens and the oranges, just beautiful. I'm gonna keep this one. And then I have the Mini Masquerade. I'm not even sure if you can get this anymore, but this is going nowhere. This is like, you got two rows of brights and then two rows of neutrals. It's a really beautiful formula. It is really pigmented and I love playing with this. So I'm gonna keep this one. And then the final palette is the Emily Noel The Once palette by Makeup Revolution. And this is quite a big palette. This is what it looks like. And once again, this just doesn't inspire me, unfortunately. So I'm going to declutter this one. Right, now I have gone through all my palettes. I'm just gonna go away and count how many I've decluttered and how many I've kept. And I'll come back with some totals. Okay guys, I know this looks like a mess, but I'm gonna be packing some of these palettes soon because like I said, we are moving very soon. I have come back with some numbers. So I have decluttered 67 and kept 93. I'm pretty impressed with myself on that because I didn't think I was going to declutter that much, maybe 20 or something. So to declutter like nearly 70 palettes is a big thing for me. So I feel so much better. I feel like I'm gonna be able to move this and um, this is not gonna take up too many boxes now. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this and I will see you very soon.